What's up, Call of Duty fans? We got another one here for you midweek as the CWL Vegas pools have been pulled. Pulled? Pulled? We need to make sure we articulate that one, I guess. My whole shift coming back with you again. We'll just kind of break down what the pools look like. I'm sure most of you already know, but I kind of wanted to give my insight and thoughts on a couple of them as they go. So let's dig in and take a look to see what the Vegas pool play looks like. Of course, five teams in each pool. And the top four seeds going in based on pro points again were 100 Thieves, Luminosity, FaZe Clan, and Splice in that order. And then as we go through, we obviously had the different pools as far as who was potted up. The first pod was E United, Red Reserve, Optic, and Envy. They would go the ways as you see them in Pool A. 100 Thieves would be getting the E United set. Luminosity got Red Reserve, FaZe Clan got Envy, and then Splice. And they would get the unfortunate pool of optic gaming and in the second pod you saw reciprocity evil geniuses team mad cat and g2 esports obviously as you see them on your screen that's where they went to and i'm really excited we'll just break these down individually as we go through at least with these three guaranteed teams of course there are also play-in teams and open bracket teams that have a chance of getting into pool play the play-in teams would obviously go losers losers winners winners and then of course the top four open bracket teams now the most exciting information that i could pull from this was the simple fact that open bracket games were going to be broadcasted that's super exciting not only as an aspiring commentator is that exciting as there's possibly an opportunity there but the fact of the matter is we see time and time again a lot of these players come through the open bracket and make a name for themselves they never really had any video review where they could actually showcase that and say hey this is what i did in pool play get me on a team you know this, this is gonna be really really big i think for the longevity of orgs that are tier two tier three orgs looking for players looking to get their name in the scene they'll actually be able to go and actually kind of recruit and scout out some of these players so i'm very excited about that but let's look at first and foremost what pool a looks like and you know when we were looking at this the everyone on the desk was talking about how there were certain groups of death um i personally think that this pool a is probably the hardest one out there just simply because 100 Thieves and E United have been very close to one another. But honestly, based on how we've seen Team Reciprocity play, I'm actually really excited to see them perform on land. Of course, their most notable experiences over the last couple weeks have been against Heretics in the 2K series. But I really feel like this Team Reciprocity squad has a chance to really make some waves. Now you look at Tommy, he's a really strong in-game leader. I think he's got a lot of great personality. But the thing about this team that I like the most is that they're resilient. They find out what their mistakes are. They don't get on each other's nerves. And they start to figure out how to best approach that. Now you take a look at 100 Thieves, for instance. And when things go wrong, things go very, very wrong. Very quickly, in fact. So I'm actually really worried about this 100 Thieves team. I think they're going to come into a lot of adversity, not just against these other two teams, E United and Team Reciprocity, but also whoever makes it out of the play-in bracket, as well as the open bracket, I think have a shot to really get underneath the skin of 100 Thieves. I think they're riding on a little bit too much ego. I think their gameplay is great. I think Kenny is definitely in conversation for top five, definitely top five, if not top three SMGers in the game. You take a look at the other players on that squad and you say, well, these guys are all really solid on paper. But the biggest problem for me comes down to, will they actually make moves outside of just paper? Will they actually find a way to get themselves in a position to win a tournament this early uh my answer i think at this point is probably no slasher goes off a little bit too hard pharaoh and enable just kind of seem like they're there at the moment octane is vocal but I, I mean i just don't feel like this team has the same kind of chemistry that a reciprocity or an e united has you take a look at e united yeah they get a little dramatic at times but clayster has really stepped up this game i really like his positioning as of course, he's been mostly rocking ARs, but he's, you know, he tried to make the swordfish work at one point in time. I wonder if we'll see more of that. I'm excited to see that. And then uh, Abizi and, and Pristini have both locked down the SMG role really, really well. I think this is going to be a really interesting pool. I'm really excited to see how this one plays out. This is, I think, the pool of death, though, um, with maybe one exception. We go over to pool number two, pool B. I almost said pool number B. That's that's not how that works. Alpha and America Systems. Luminosity being the top seed. Red Reserve is the big question mark. As we come through of course luminosity we'll start with them first and foremost gunless john formal classic and slack this team has a lot of i think expectations riding on them based on the names that they have in front of them of course a couple of players that are trying to kind of get back into the scene and make themselves a name of course with formal and classic being together should make for an interesting uh, dynamic they have not really performed up to what i would say standards are so far in online tournament of course that 3-2 loss versus splice in the cmg pro down showdown wasn't the way they wanted to see it go 
and they had a 3-0 win against D United, but D United wasn't, I don't think, playing with Clayster, or he was playing on really bad internet. So we're not going to really hold that one against the United. Regardless, if they're not able to take a full set off of Splice, it's going to be really difficult, I think, for them to move through this bracket. Although I think they have the easiest pool, without a doubt. Red Reserve, we know absolutely nothing about as they have not been playing anything on stream. And they haven't really played since the first 2K event, which they did not really play all that well. Vance, Rated, Joe, Scraps, and Zero make up that roster. But you have to think that the Europeans have been putting in the time and they're going to be able to show up. Especially with this pool, I think they're going to have a lot of flexibility. Both of these teams, Luminosity and Red Reserve, when it comes to giving up a couple of maps and resituating themselves, adjusting, and kind of finding their stride late, where other teams won't get that opportunity. You switch over to Evil Geniuses, and I think that the desk was being a little bit too nice about this team. To be completely honest, this is, I think, they hit it on the head. A lot of players that probably could have been fifths in other rosters, but ended up becoming... A full roster themselves of course with exotic switching for lace field that makes the team interestingly more better question mark using it more for the pro points than probably anything else but with saints and fellow out there you, you just look at what they're at to play up against i think that they have again this is an easy pool for them i think they have a chance to really make a name so when it comes to like pool of death i think all these teams could very well be close together in skill but it's not at the highest level right now that we've seen so far. I think that if you're a play-in or an open bracket team and you get into Pool B, I think you're going to be pretty thankful for it because Luminosity honestly seems like the only team in there that really will make some waves. Of course, we don't know much about Red Reserve, so hold that phone for now. Over to Pool C, which I think might be the other potential pool of death at this point in time. I think FaZe Clan is vastly underrated. I think that they've played extremely well over the last couple of weeks. I think that their ideas and the way they're trying to execute are actually at a level above more off, more of the teams. They're just trying to find their synergy when it comes to trading and making sure they put themselves in a position to win full-on team fights and those gunfights that they want on those neutral points when it comes to hard points specifically, but also in things like control. Search and Destroy, they've looked actually pretty decent, to be completely honest. But you look at Attach, Zuma, Method, Priesta, and Replays, and... This team, I think, again, like I said, they finished in the 9 through 16 spot in all the 2Ks so far. And they did not have the greatest showing in the CMG Pro Down Showdown, having a tough time against Selium and Simp and that squad of the United Up-and-Comer Academy team. But I think this team is vastly underrated. I think that they've thrown a couple of games. There was one set they really should have won 5-0, but they didn't because they threw the last three games. Uh, I think they figured those problems out, and I think they come out and be one of the strongest teams at Vegas. You look at Team Envy in the two spot, and this team, I think, is also very good when they work together. This is the biggest problem when you have someone like Aix on the team who is, again, very dramatic and very vocal. It kind of, when you listen to their comms, and it's kind of copy-paste this 200 Thieves as well. It kind of like, hey, I have this. Can I use it? Like, for instance, Apathy all the time is like, I should, do, should I use TAC? Should I use TAC 5? Should I use 200? It's like everyone is asking for permission from Aix to use their abilities. Because if they use them incorrectly, then Aix will go off on them and say that they were stupid and wrong. So when you look at this team where you have the four reigning champions, you think that this team should have a lot of expectations. I think that the more adversity they go up against, the weaker they get. So when you are putting in the pool versus phase versus team Mad Cat, I think they might fall a little bit just because. They either, here's the thing. On land, they'll either rise or they'll fall. And I think if you see them fall, there's going to be a pretty big switch up. Huke on that team, I think, is a really good addition for a fifth. It just comes down to can they execute and can they just get out of their own space and just play the game as a five-man team and stop getting at each other's throats. You switch over to Team Madcat, and this is an interesting team because they do not have an org as of yet, but you look at it, it's kind of a combination of Old Splice players, Alex from Unilad, Epsilon from Dave, and then Sween had PD for at one point in time. I think this roster is actually really strong. I definitely think it's in contestant for possibly being a top three team. I mean, you got to consider top team Sween is not going to be in this Vegas pool play as of right now. Um, they will have the UK bid to go in as uh, into the pool play or the open play. Um, but you look at this squad on paper and I think that they're actually a really solid team. My biggest worry is who's going to hold down the AR slot. So far, we haven't seen too many people using the, uh, the ICR, uh, like you would normally like to see when it comes to anchoring and rotating. So I think that's going to be their biggest weak point, but I definitely think they can shake things up and have themselves a good pool play. I don't see them doing too much damage against Envy or FaZe, but I think they have the potential of making something surprising happen. This is my dark horse team, I think, to make a possible run. 
And then you go over to pool D, which it, a lot of people will look at this pool and say, wow, this is going to be a tough pool. But it, I don't think it really will be for a lot of reasons. Number one, Optics in this pool, and they have dominated everybody. I think that they're by far the strongest team when it comes to who's playing in the game right now. I think they have the biggest chance at winning, and I think that the expectations that Optic should win this based on their online play, I mean, it's not just been that they've won everything. They've dominated everything. And they're working well together. TP's holding that that squad down so well. And you look at this Optic Gaming squad, and I think Scump is probably the best SMG in the game. Crimzik's probably the best AR in the game. And TJ has really kind of come to form since leaving Rise and joining into this Optic team. And Dashi and Karma have just been incredible, locking down that flex position. I think this team is pretty unstoppable. But you look at Splice, and not a lot of people are talking about Splice. Not a lot of them stream or have these big personalities. And I think that's actually a big pro for them. They've gotten better over the course of the last couple of weeks. They finished in the 5 through A spot in the 2K, the first 2K. And then they tied for the third, fourth spot in the second. And they did pretty well in the CMG as well. Uh, so I think this is a team to not sleep on. I think they could do some damage against Optic. I think they definitely beat G2. But I, it's just kind of hard to say this is a pool of death because I don't think Splice is on the same level as Optic. I don't think anyone's at the same level as Optic. Then you go over to G2, and this is kind of like a throw-together team that you kind of look at and you say, well, what will these guys actually do um, as a full team? Because, to be fair, Chino, Ricky, Decimate, Blast, and Facento really have not had a lot of moments to shine. They finished the, the fifth through eighth spot in the first 2K, nine through 16 in the second. And you look at these two teams that are going up against, notably, I think they beat the play-in teams, depending on who they are. Uh, I think they have a pretty decent showing, but I don't see them making it to the top two. So that's what I got for the first four pools. Now, it is important to note that there is a play-in qualifier as well, which will include a number of really solid teams, including Impact, Team 3G, Tainted Minds, Gone Gaming, Imperial, UU, UUYU, I don't know, I still don't know how to pronounce that, Mind Freak, and Team Spacely. There's a lot of solid teams here. I think when you look at it, you're looking at teams like Tainted Minds, like Team Spacely to run through that. 3G should have a good showing as well. I'm also really excited about this Imperial team, which was just picked up by the org. It includes Hawk, Denza, Moose, Greedy, and Vortex. I think they're actually a pretty solid team. They finished in the three through four spot in the first 2K and then have kind of fallen off lately. They definitely have a chance to obviously get some momentum against uh, UIU, UU, but I think at the end of the day, Team, Splace, team Spacely words, could probably run away with this pool play qualifier. Um, and then, of course, the open bracket. We don't know who's all there, but regardless, it should be good. showing. That's what we got. That's pool play. That's Vegas. That's coming up here soon. I do want to do another video here in the near future about GAing and uh, what I think is not right to GA and what I think the pros need to just stop baby raging over and just play the game the way it's supposed to play. I, it's going to be an interesting topic, but for the moment, I want you guys to go down in the comments. Let me know who you think you got coming out of those four pools as we mentioned them before. We'll be doing that GA video and maybe some roster change videos here in the near future talking about potential upstarters for the open play, uh, open bracket as they go in, some some teams to keep a note on, an eye on, I don't know, put a pin in it, other things that are symbolic to keeping track of teams to come out of. I stop talking now. A lot of talking for one day. So let's go ahead and cut it here. We will be doing that open bracket to kind of, you know, keep your eye on it and as well as we'll kind of mix that in with the GA discussion that we've had before but it's been a pleasure having you up and i hold shift thank you so much for tuning in all the way through make sure you subscribe if you like the videos and want to see more until next time hope that you keep holding it down later later bye bye